Hello and welcome once again to the global online conference on sexual violence against children with an evidence-based and equity lens. My name is Bob Libat Mochabaiwa. I look forward to this particular session which is focused on protecting children from sexual violence through financing and tracking child protection expenditures. This aims of this session are to share insights on how to measure and track child protection budgets and to share imaging evidence on how selected political economy variables are influencing the level of public spending on child protection. Allow me to say a few things in order to set the scene for this particular session by outlining a few key points on why it is important for us to be talking about child protection financing in particular why we should be tracking child protection budgets and expenditures first protecting children from violence cost money unfortunately child protection funding especially in a humanitarian context is often too little and too late a number of studies have also shown that child protection is the least funded government function. In all this, it is saddening to note that the cost of inaction is too high. For example, it is estimated that global economic impacts and costs resulting from uh, physical, psychological and sexual violence against children can be as high as 8 trillion dollars is not small amount of money allow me ladies and gentlemen to start this particular session by providing a working definition of public spending on child protection how do we define this particular concept we define public spending on child protection as the sum total of expenditures by governments from domestic and international resources to interventions and programs aimed at preventing and or responding to abuse, neglect, exploitation and violence affecting children. We can tweak this to a systems approach given the emphasis on strengthening of child protection systems to refer to the sum total of public expenditures to different institutional administrative, legislative, and other elements that work together to strengthen the protective environment around each child and his or her family within the continuum of care in both development and humanitarian context. Allow me to give a few examples of elements of a child protection systems to, system to be budgeted for such as coordination mechanisms, professional staff, policies and legislation, services, data and information. And concrete examples are also provided under each element, such as National Children's Commission for Coordination Mechanisms, Legal Reform, uh, Prevention, Early Response, and then of course under data and information we include issues such as violence against children surveys. same applies to uh, 
expanded expenses. Let me give an example of child sensitive social protection. One may argue, depending on assumptions, depending on a number of factors, that maybe 10% of a child sensitive social protection budget should be categorized as child protection or should be taken as child protection spending. We could say maybe 5% of the public order and security budget goes to protecting children. So we then add direct expenditures plus indirect and expand it to come up with the total child protection spending in a given country with a particular point in time. Now here are a few indicators that we should measure and track from a public spending point of view. The first is visibility of child protection national sector uh, development plans. The second one is visibility of child protection and medium term financial plans and funding proposals. It is important for us to appreciate that whatever you budget for should first find expression in a national development plan, but also for countries that do medium term expenditure planning, we need to begin to see social welfare, child protection and other social articulated in these key plans. So we'll have to do content analysis to see how um, child protection is covered in these particular documents. Then we measure availability of resources, alternatively, or we may call it fiscal space for child protection. I'm looking at both domestic and international resources. And number four, we look at allocative efficiency of child protection budgets, which basically is a measurement of the link child protection priorities and government budget. The fifth factor is composition of child protection budgets and then of course adequacy, equity and efficiency and effectiveness of child protection spending. So this is a list of indicators that we need to train over time in order to ascertain the, the level and quality of public spending on child protection by your respective now, let me just provide very quick definitions for those of us who are not coming from the public finance background of some of the key terms that we will use in this session or that we've already referred to. Allocative efficiency is a measurement of all the resources that are allocated to priority areas with potential to make a difference for children. Adequacy of budgets, measurement of whether allocated resources match financial needs or cost and plans. And then composition of budgets refers to the different elements of a budget and a given vote or allocation. Then equity of spending is the fairness in the way resources are allocated, taking into consideration needs, social and economic and other political factors. And then of course mentioned feasibility of child protection earlier on, this refers to uh, a measurement of whether a policy or budget document is presented in a way that allows child protection to be identifiable. With this background, I need to move straight into the crux of the presentation by looking at the key steps on how to measure and track child protection budget or expenditures. Allow me to just briefly explain that although closely related, the term budget is slightly different from expenditure. Budget refers to uh, what is provided for, what is planned for, uh, the financial estimates, but expenditures refer to what actually has been paid, what has been uh, utilized budget up to date, if we may use that term. Now here are the key steps. Step number one, decide on scope and objectives of the child protection budget or expenditure tracking exercise. So this could be geographic scope, it could also be thematic scope by way of looking at specific issues uh, such as child sexual abuse, child marriage, and uh, children on the move. It is important to that one can work on several things at the same time, depending on your on resources available, the skills base you have, but there's, there's, it's up to a country program or organization to decide.
scope and then of course to articulate the specific objectives um, of a given exercise. Now step two, based on issue and scope of the exercise, one should unpack the child protection system in order to map out all elements whose budget should be trained. Here are examples using a prevention response model. Things such as public education and awareness raising, course response include a whole range of services such as case handling, uh, places of safety, follow-up services, medical support, etc. So we have to understand the different issues that should be budgeted for or the different issues that we should, we should look for in a government um, document like budget estimates. Step number three is a mapping out ministries and departments are responsible for each element. Here is an example. Take public education and awareness raising. It could be responsibility of the Ministry of Social Welfare or Education. Case handling, family tracing could be responsibility of social welfare and of course justice for children um, could be placed in the docket of the Ministry of Justice. Step number four is about identifying specific budget line items to track under each ministry or department. Specifically, it is about line-by-line -line review of budget documents and financial proposals. In this process, you must pay a particular attention to budget classification. There are three main ways of classifying government budgets, either by economic classification, administrative, or functional classification which many governments use UN COFOC which is the classification of uh, government functions and then of course mark tag and codify all relevant budget line items step number five is about collection of relevant budgetary and non-budgetary data uh, which range from medium term financial estimates, cost estimates, approved estimates, budget outturns, intergovernmental transfers, as well as demographic and child protection statistics, and of course priorities and programs. Step number six is about analyzing collected data. Here are examples of the types of analysis to be done. Firstly, measure how much governments are spending in absolute per capita and proportion terms, that is, as a best proportion of total government budget, of revenue, or GDP. You can also analyze composition, equity, variances, effectiveness, and efficiency of budgets as well as trends over time. It is also important to note that it is you want to require specific tools and methodologies to assess how well public resources are spent and of course we need to look at issues of how specific budgets are responsive to the needs of boys and girls step number seven interpret findings and make conclusions Based on the above analysis, if possible, try and get your data sets. One could come up with conclusions like, the government is spending so much amount of money on child protection, or that local and national budgets do not reflect what is contained in national programs of action for children, or that XX percentage of budgets is allocated to wages, recurrent cost, or to such and such programs. You could also say, although progress has been made to finance establishment of child-friendly courts, more still need to be done to support these other programs such as family support clinics, etc. These are the seven steps. They are not necessarily presented in this linear, the, in this linear form. In some cases, two steps may happen at the same time. What is important is for us to understand the different steps we may have to undertake 
in order to successfully measure and track child protection budgets. Let me say a few points concerning the challenges that one may encounter when measuring and tracking child protection budgets and expenditures. Firstly, child protection budgets are scattered in different ministries. Secondly, most budget classifications are not sufficiently disaggregated. This means it is difficult to identify specific items that relate to child protection and it is difficult also to establish minimum level of required spending and then it is also important to note that several child protection programs are funded through off-budget mechanisms by donors and NGOs. This makes it difficult to measure or track such expenditures. And then of course the challenges to do with cross-country comparability of data as well as lack of accurate regular valid and validated up-to-date data and lastly waiting is not always easy it's challenging but it has to be done now let me move straight to the uh, to part three of my session which looks at the political economy variables influencing the level of public spending on child protection Political economy variable number one is state fragility. This refers to a situation whereby the government is not functioning optimally because of conflict, because of uh, governance challenges or other complexities that makes it difficult to smoothly run the affairs of business. So what do we see in such context? Child protection is almost entirely donor funded. Uh, child protection is not a spending priority of government and oftentimes child protection is more project specific and is never about strengthening child protection systems and of course we see interventions leaning more towards a pre response than prevention. The second political economy variable is constructions of childhood and conceptualizations of child protection. Under this broad heading, we talk about minority versus majority world childhood constructions with regards to what constitutes abuse or not. And then, of course, the issue of child protection being treated as a family and private matter by some communities and not a public policy issue. Hence, it should not, uh, it does not need that much public funding. Of course, we know that this is changing with development of child protection laws and policies in many countries. But suffice to say that child protection is poorly understood as a concept and its links to economic and political development is very minimally known. Then of course there are issues of social norms, myths and cultural beliefs which influence community views on specific child protection issues which in turn then affects the political profile of child protection and there's and the resultant implications on the level of public spending on child protection. Third variable interest and incentives of those in power. Under this theme we look at how politicians are interested in winning elections as most voters care about their economy. We have noted in a number of countries that child protection is oftentimes um, not seen as having that political appeal as much as employment creation, education or even cash transfers. As a result, child protection does not always lend itself easily to pork barrel projects and is therefore not a powerful tool for securing loyalty and support of voters. Therefore, we see, as a result, we see that in a number of countries, including the Global North, child protection is not visible in political manifestos. Fourth, it's power relations between ministries and government. Of course, the whole issue of politics of budgeting, we know for a fact, through a number of studies, is responsible for job welfare are usually the least powerful and even for general government. And there are 
easy to sacrifice when they have scarce resources. In fact, in some cases, the resources can be taken from such ministries and, and given to other ministries, which in itself is problematic. Then, of course, although there is evidence, uh, it is fair to also say a number of CSOs lack the agency, expertise, and political power to effectively influence increases in budget allocations to child protection. We need to move to the next uh, political economy variable in the interest of time, fiscal space challenges and political economy dynamics. Evidence from selected African countries has shown that child protection is least prioritized when a country is faced with fiscal space constraints. Others have also shown that if ever there are austerity measures, it is sectors such as child protection that always get the first cut. Of course, it is important to note that global initiatives such as the Global Partnership to End Violence Against Children are key platforms or instruments to leverage international resources towards child protection. Now I'm going to move straight to the next uh, variable, which is the operator's functionality and robustness of public finance institutions. Here there are a couple of issues that are of interest that uh, members and participants should take note of because of how they influence the relationship uh, between different uh, actors such as central and national government but also uh, how treasuries or ministries of finance function and of course power of the legislature. And lastly, global forces. Public spending on child protection is influenced by a range of global forces, such as the international child rights normative framework, general comments included, outreaches, and the international structures such as global partnership have alluded to this area on donor incentives and uh, interest sometimes influence how much and on what is spent on child protection. And then, of course, there are issues such as SDGs and the influence of international finance institutions such as the World Bank. Allow me uh, to close this particular slide by saying budgeting is both technical and political process. We cannot influence the level of child protection spending just by addressing the technical and administrative issues. We need to apply a political economy approach to help us influence all the variables I've alluded to earlier on. If we cannot measure child protection spend, we cannot track it. Thus, there is a need to develop appropriate tools and methods for measuring and tracking child protection budgets and expenditures. And considering the relationship between child protection and sustainable development, governments cannot afford any longer to underinvest in child protection. This is a challenge that I place before many of you who are child protection practitioners to bring the necessary evidence to make the moral, legal, economic and political case for investing in child protection. Allow me to say thank you for listening It is discussion time. If you have issues, please feel free to email me, B L M U C H A B A I W 